Hey guys, Chris here, and I want to share with you today something that I recently discovered uh, about Cubase. And uh, it was something that was bugging me for quite some time, and I wasn't sure how to pull it off. And it seemed crazy to me that it's not very obvious. And actually, I discovered that it's mostly like a side effect of something else, some, some other feature of Cubase, instead of like a straightforward, here's how to do this uh, function. So what I was trying to do is control multiple VST instruments using only one MIDI channel as a, a master track, basically. So which is something that is uh, done in the, in the hardware world for quite a while, well, basically since MIDI was first introduced using uh, MIDI through uh, connections, which is, you know, you connect a bunch of MIDI devices in a row using the MIDI through and then what you uh, play in the first uh, device in your first controller or keyboard or what have you is then transmitted uh, basically by passing any processing that's done in each of the devices you know from one to the other to the other and then they all be, are being controlled together uh, to give you another example in this in the software world for example if you're using contact or any other of the you know sample players which can load multiple patches or even if you're using like a in, a, any other instrument that you know allows a multiple patches to be loaded um, but I'm, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna use contact as an example because in contact you can use patches from all over the place you don't need to be from the same manufacturer uh, uh, which would be the case if you were using Omnisphere or whatever you know so I'm gonna load one patch here, and you can see that it plays through just fine. Uh, and then I'm going to load another patch from a completely different uh, manufacturer and a completely different uh, philosophy of sound, which is the, basically, you know, the sequenced... Uh, uh, sorry, you have to set the same MIDI channel. And now you can see that I'm getting sound out of both, and I'm controlling them both with my main uh, MIDI uh, track here, my instrument track, rather. So this was something that I wanted to do, but without having to load, you know, uh, an, a, an engine that, you know, in which I would load my, the patches that I prefer. Just, in, just straightforward load my VST instruments in the VST rack that uh, Cubase uses, or just a bunch of VST instrument channels and control them using only one MIDI track. And it seemed to me that it was not actually possible. And I recently discovered how to do it, and I'm going to demonstrate right now. I'm going to load, just for the sake of argument, like a piano here. It's the new Arturia model piano. And this is the sound, and then I'm going to load another sound which is similar. I'm gonna load an electric piano from Lounge Lizards, which is my favorite uh, electric piano module. And you've heard it in pretty much every of my records, uh, when, whenever there's a, an electric piano whirly, whirlizer, stuff like that. And it sounds like this. What I wanted to do is, you know, for whatever reason, uh, maybe layer those two instruments. And of course, one way to do it is, you know, to uh, like play some, play something, and then copy it. Oops, sorry, and then copy it to the other one, and then sort of you're getting it. But but I wanted to avoid, you know, such silly workarounds and. Uh, also, another way to, to, to technically work around it is to enable record on both ones, and then that's a, that's a quick and easy way to do it also. Uh, but I still was curious that uh, it was, you, you weren't able to, you know, basically like go at some place and select, you know, several MIDI outputs for an instrument track. And the way to do it actually is to add a MIDI track, which I'm gonna call MIDI Master. Oop. MIDI Master here, and 
The thing with Cubase is that MIDI tracks uh, have several panels here to load, and what if some of them, like the modifier or you know the inserts, basically in the sense, you can load MIDI effects. So if I click here, I can select one of those MIDI effects, and then, particularly using the Send, I can set it to another channel. Because once I activate my Send, then I can come here and select my source, my, my target. So if I you see that this MIDI echo is, is, is doing a specific effect. So, so it's sending it to uh, this. Actually, why is it playing both of them? I have no idea. Oh, because here I have it, yeah, going to my lounge legend. Yeah, of course, that's stupid of me. Anyway, so you see now that my MIDI channel is sending no, it doesn't send any output, but through the sends and through this effect, I'm transmitting my signal to another uh, MIDI track. To instrument track in this case. So what you want to do is instead of having this effect applied to your thing, have no effect, which is simply done by choosing no effects. And why wasn't this obvious? So you can see I can now control my piano using this MIDI channel. But the thing is, unless you turn the, e the effect on, you cannot select uh, an output. You need to turn it off and then Select an album, so now, now I'm going to select my electric piano, and now you can see that I'm controlling both. I'm going to pan them hard left and hard right so you can listen to it a bit more clearly. Okay, and there you have it, and it's as simple as that. The weird thing is that this MIDI Sense panel here is not actually intended for that. It's intended, as you can see here, this is the documentation in the Cubase manual. Um, I have took, took some screen captures and you can see that it says MIDI sends and this is where it simply, you know, uh, talks about all the panels in a very brief way. It says MIDI sends allows you to send MIDI effects. So no mention of, you know, controlling other stuff. And even in the screenshot, you can see that there's an effect and then an output. And in the more detailed, uh, uh, pages, you can see here MIDI sense, and I, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, you can pause the video and read it if you want, but I guarantee you there's no mention of this uh, being used as, you know, a way to control multiple uh, instruments. It's It rather talks about how to use it to, you know, send your effects to another instrument, etc. So there you have it in a very simple way. Of course, you still get are, are limited to four um, cents here, but I mean it, it should be enough. And to be honest, it's not a matter of this is like being an absolute necessity for me to do, or it's not like a make or break feature. But it's still it's something I would assume it would be you know more obvious. To be honest with you, the way I would really want this to be done is instead of here having this drop down list where I can select one particular output for my MIDI uh, channel or even you know, one particular input and this all MIDI inputs, which is, you know, uh, editable, in the, editable in the setups here, which you can, you know, you can say which inputs are included in the uh, all MIDI thing. I would much rather have this to be, you know, like a, a list where you can tick the, um, the inputs and outputs you want and be as simple as that. And that be also included in the functions of the instrument track. But it is not. I hope to see this feature in a future version of Cubase. But for now, if we need such a thing, we have to make do with this uh, MIDI sense, which I mean, works pretty good. Okay, and that was it for today. Just a little simple thing that it might seem pointless, but it's just weird to me that it's not, you know, either uh, better documented or plainly obvious. Uh, 
So I hope this helps. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.